So what makes more power? A big bore short stroke 372 small block stroker or a small bore big stroke 383 stroker? Does bore and stroke even matter? Plus a bonus test, 302 versus 347 with stock heads cam and intake. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're looking at stroker motors and why they're beneficial. First off, a small block Chevy stroker shootout, 372 big bore short stroke versus 383 small bore big stroke. Which one would you pick? Then we're going to take a look at Ford 302 versus 347, and I'm going to tell you why a stroker is still beneficial even when you saddle it with stock heads, stock cam, and stock intake. Okay, guys, let's jump right in. Our <laughs> this is a discussion that we have all the time in the live feed. It's bore versus stroke. So what is really better? We're going to take a look at two combinations. And unfortunately, if you're looking for a direct comparison between a 372, which is the, the 4125 bore, and then the short 3480, 3.48, you know, standard 350 stroke, versus the 383, which is a 4030 bore, and then the 3750 stroke, you know, so it's your big bore short stroke and then versus the reverse. This isn't that. <laughs> These are just two combinations that we happen to run that were very, very similar, you know, using those displacements and using those short block combinations. They both have really good heads. They both basically have identical cam timing. They both have single plane intake manifolds. They both have 950 hollies. They both have roller rockers. They're both rolling headers, all that stuff. The compression is very, very similar. So these are as close as I could get looking at the combinations that we have. So let's take a look. Starting off with our 372, this was a motor that's now the Gladiator 2 from the guys at West Tech Performance. This was supplied to them by the guys at Dart, so it's a Dart SHP short block, flat top pistons, valve reliefs, as I said, a 4125 bore, and then the 3480 stroke, standard 350 stroke. And this combination it was equipped with A Mylodon oil pan, it has flat top pistons, it has a um, Holly strip dominator intake manifold, a 950 Holly carburetor, which is what we use normally, uh, 1.5 roller rockers, and then the crane cam was a 540-560 lift, and a 242-248 and 111 or 12 degree lobe separation angle. This was a good combination, and they run it all the time, and run in this manner, you know, the way that's on the dyno, electric water pump, they have dyno headers, you know, that are run on all of these combinations. You can see inch and three quarter run into their three and a half inch collectors, I think, which is pretty big. But these are, they, they look kind of like sprint car headers. Both of them have MSD ignitions on them. Run in this manner, 520 horsepower and 476 foot pounds of torque. So now let's take a look and we'll compare that to a 383 run in very similar uh, configuration. I'll, we'll go ahead and go over the specs as that as always. So this 383, as you might imagine, different bore and stroke has a 4030 bore and a 3750 stroke. So it's basically the 400 crank in the 350 block, but the 350 block in this case was bored over. Same thing, flat top pistons with valve relief so they could run camshaft. It did not It did not have the um, dart heads that were run on the previous combination. This one had Brodex heads. The last combination, the 372 had dart 210 CNC heads on it. This one had heads that flow very, very similar. They're Brodex Dragon Slayer heads, and they flow just over a touch over 300 CFM, so more than enough to support this kind of power level. It had the comp version of the 242-248 cam. It was an Extreme Energy 294 cam, which again, 540-562 lift, 242-248, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. So the crane cam had a two more degrees of lobe separation angle, so maybe not quite as you know solid in the middle there. Same headers, same MSD, same 950 carburetor, also a single plane intake manifold. We'll take a look at that. This one it was a Brodex single plane intake manifold. And uh, as I said, Dragon Slayer heads. Both of them had uh, 1.5 ratio roller, rocker, roller rockers on. <coughs> Excuse me. Same as zero water pump, all that stuff. So running right this matter, we can see the, the 33 actually didn't produce quite as much peak power as the 372 did, 508 horsepower. Quite a bit more torque though, 504 foot-pounds. In fact, the 383 made more torque all the way up to 50, 
seven or 800 RPM and then fell down uh, on the power peak compared to the, the bigger bore motor. So let me know what you guys think. <laughs> let me know in the comments. Is this a big bore thing where, or is this the fact that maybe the 210 heads flow a little bit more than the Brodex heads? Maybe they're making a little bit more power. What do you guys think? Is this a bore or stroke combination thing? Or is just the fact that we had slightly different combinations that dictated what happened between our big bore short stroke and our small bore big stroke? Let me know in the comments. After taking a look at the 372 versus 383 on the Chevy side, now we're going to take a look at a comparison for Ford motors. And I specifically included this because I wanted to talk to people about the effect of displacement and its benefit basically for towing applications because I get a lot of questions on towing. Hey, how do I improve my low speed power? And obviously displacement is one of the ways to do that. And we're going to look at a specific example because when you increase the displacement, you also have to increase the airflow to feed that displacement. But what happens if you don't do that? What happens if you just add like a stroke recombination and leave all of your stock heads, cam and intake manifold on there? what really happens and then is the stroker like really an added benefit so let's take a look at a comparison that i did this was on a 302 and we'll compare the 302 to stepping up to a 347 obviously if someone's asking me what they should do i would tell them not to pick a 302 i would probably tell them not to pick a 347 i would tell them you just need to step up to a 351 right off the bat if you're going to the wrecking yard to get a motor just get the bigger one to begin with and the added benefit of that is if you pick a 351 you could just make it a 408 or a 392 or whatever displacement you wanted which would definitely add power but let's take a look and see what happens on this 302 versus 347 and specifically if you're thinking hey i want to increase the displacement so i can get lots of like added torque i want to show you what happens and why it happens so we'll take a look at our 302 this was a small block Ford 302. Originally, we tested this basically with a GT40 intake manifold rather than the HO intake manifold. It had a bigger throttle body on it, but it had stock E7TE heads. They did have valve springs on them because later on we would run camshafts on them. It had the stock 5 liter cam. It had stock compression. It had 36 pound injectors, again, because we were going to add more power to it. And then long tube headers. So what we did was run the 302 like this. And then what we did was take off the heads, cam, and intake manifold from this 302 and slide in a 347 stroker, and you can see what the effect was. So run in this manner, our 302 produced 278.5 horsepower, and the thing that we're looking at is torque, 323 foot-pounds of torque. So now what happens, hey, Richard, I want to, you, you know, if you want to add low speed power for a towing application you obviously could add boost you could add a small turbo you could add some kind of positive displacement blower that would work good a centrifugal blower like a vortex or something can work but since they supply so little boost especially down low at 2000 rpm i think a positive displacement or something else might be better but i've run those plenty in the past and they work pretty well but if you're looking at adding low speed power and you want to do towing you know what works really well is basically added displacement. So I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here's what happened when we installed our 347. So unfortunately, I didn't load it all the way down to 2000 RPM, but we can get a pretty good idea on what's going on from the displacement. And we'll also talk about why that's happening. So you can see from our 347, our, our torque went up from 320 foot pounds here to 396 foot pounds so huge torque gains below 3500 rpm N not really big power gains we went from 278 to a little over 300 so not bad but that is utilizing the same e7te heads the same factory five liter camshaft and the same gt40 induction system we ran the same headers on it both of them ran with an optimized tune for the 347 we selected a uh, 347 stroker kit from the guys at scat it was a cast crank, but forge rods and forged flat top pistons with valve relief. So later on, we could run more camshaft in it. So the thing that I want to talk about on this combination is, hey, Richard, why do we get such big torque gains down low, but we don't see huge power gains out at the top? And the answer to that is strictly airflow. 
we're obviously limiting the power potential of this combination because we have stock cylinder heads that don't flow very well. We have a mild factory camshaft, again, not allowing lots of power or RPM. And then we have a long runner GT40 intake manifold, again, designed for low speed power and also designed to really feed the needs of a 302 and not a 347. So that minimizes the amount of power we can make out, you know, on the big end out at 5,500 or so, but it doesn't really limit us down low. You see down low, the amount of airflow that, that is required by an engine is much less at lower RPM than it is at high RPM. If we were to put a, a meter on this, we would see as RPM goes up, also the airflow needs go up. But this combination, the factory heads, the GT40 intake manifold and the mild camshaft have plenty of airflow and plenty of power potential to support what's happening down low. So the 347 can take advantage of, you know, all that extra displacement and it makes a lot more torque down low because it still has the airflow to feed it. As we go up in RPM, no such luck. You need to add ported heads in the bigger camshaft and obviously maybe an even better intake manifold than the GT40, but down low for towing, it works pretty well if you just increase displacement. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.